watched a hundred YouTube guys. Oh, this this may sound familiar from some people who have come on this show. <laughs> guys, I've watched a oh, yes. hundred YouTube videos yes. on 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 why the Earth is round. Therefore, yeah, I YouTube. can tell you, I'm an expert now. I'm actually a, a genius on the set now. It's, it's ridiculous. It's and you laugh at me said that. Right. So that's that's what a lot of public education is. It's a, hey, here's a slide. It's just there's a human telling you to look at this slide. Yeah. It's no different there's than YouTube. A lot, there's video. a lot of rote memorization. That, that's true. I think it's, I, yeah. I think that, I, I think at the beginning you have to have some rote memorization. That's how you 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 do grasp things. But oh, when you hit the college yeah. level, I think a lot of that has to change. I think it has to migrate from rote memorization to novel um, information, and, I, and especially around yeah. third or fourth year kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I agree with you. I think a lot of it is just strictly rote memorization, and anybody that has right. a good memory can do rote memorization. It is much more difficult as you guys both right. have demonstrated to be creative and to come up with your own novel things. And I get crap on a lot. Cause I, I things I do come up with novel argumentation, a lot of people don't are, understand. And so they just kind of have a kickback against it and they have a recoil yeah. rather than trying to understand it. Cause a lot of them that do that just have the, the, the things memorized. Some, they just have rote memorization. And right. I I've had to learn the hard way that rote memorization doesn't get you to a fundamental understanding. It just means, you know, the material. Right. Yeah, I agree. And and you understand the difference between, like, you know, people who are just like you said, are really good at memorization. They become usually at the valedictorian level. Doesn't necessarily mean they have an incredibly high intellect because what is intelligence is the ability to solve problems, essentially. Right? Exactly we right. Do, we'll, we'll leave it as that, right? So that it's not really solving a problem to memorize things. It's just you're really good at memorizing and reading. So that's where there's the uh, the exchange. Like, and then you start throwing ideas and new ideas at them. They're like, oh, wait a second, I didn't memorize this. What's going on? Yeah. Hello, hello in the chat just said you realize your show is on YouTube, right? And yes, we do. However, if you're out there quoting our show as a source for anything, oh, then um, then don't, shame don't. on you. You know what I mean? Don't. Yeah. That's, that's our I point. Mean, I, say, don't, I say the same thing. It's like I, I'm not a master. Guys, everybody wants to call me, you know, master or seafood fail or something. Duh, don't ever do that. Like, I just want to encourage you guys to go train. Yes, I do have permission to teach from my master in martial arts, but. Hey man, I'm just trying to encourage you guys. I'm not some absolute authority on the subject. Like there are, there are better sources. Yeah, we don't want to be responsible. You know, we it's it's already it's already bad <laughs> enough for probably the uh, the stress induced anxiety attacks that we cause. But that's that's enough for us. Don't yeah. don't quote us as a source. Um, yeah, so, whenever you uh, hear something like Steve or Kyle have said on this particular topic as a support for your argument, yeah, you're pretty well going to be screwed. Yeah. <laughs> so what uh what's the reaction we 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 kind of alluded to it or talked about it briefly before we came on um on live right. but what's the reaction that you you get from your channel we were talking about i can't remember what kicked off the the conversation but i heard or you say that you get death threats sometimes what would be like your channel well, is positive and like uh uplifting and motivating yeah. and you wouldn't <laughs> think that you know, you would get that that kind of thing with that kind of channel. What 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 I agree. what did you get and why? <laughs> but yeah, so here's the thing, and I've kind of come to realize this over the past few years is, you know, the martial arts community, or at least you know, some percentage of it, right, that is tangible on my channel or in others, is uh, is a very toxic community. But you know, that's easy to say about anything, right? Let's let's look deeper into it. I was actually toxic, and why is it toxic? So yeah, I get death threats all the time, and I think. The reason is I've come, I've come to understand that there's a deep-seated insecurity when it comes to martial arts, especially for men, I think just based on instinct, right? Um, because if you think about it, let's, let's go to the basics here. We're pretty much cavemen. I talk about this all the time when we talk about nutrition right? because it's very tied in. We're cavemen for the most part, physiologically, right? So when it comes to, you know, for especially a particularly insecure male to look at another male, and to sort of acknowledge them as a good fighter, what are they actually saying? What does it actually mean on a deeper level? Well, it means they're strong enough to kill me and take my woman and my hut and my sticks and stones or whatever the heck cavemen worry about, right? So that's <laughs> kind of the issue, I think, at that point. And again, you see these personalities come in. I don't know. It could be we have to, we'd have to research this on a large scale, right? It could be personality type based. I don't know. But you see these people just lose their minds. For no reason. Like I said, I'm positive. You know, nobody's trying to even compete. And uh, another theory I have could be that there's a lot of sort of fake masters on YouTube who are saying the exact opposite of what I just told you guys, right? It's like, the, I am the authority. I could kill somebody in two seconds. You understand this? 
I can kill them so quick and look at me. I'm so strong. Ah, sort of the, the fake alpha we talked about earlier, right? And mm-hmm. uh, I think because there's so many of those people, it's almost a given. That, and the fact that I'm not saying that, I said, guys, I'm not a master. I'm just, you know, having fun out here. If you guys can learn anything from this or be inspired to go train with a master, awesome. But I just want to share my passions. Right? I think maybe that triggers some sort of like, no, he needs to, he needs to be angry. He needs to be mean. Um, so then the death threats come. I don't know. Um, but it's incredible. They, they, they uh, they're, they're scared you're going to take their hut. Damn, yeah, we take the hut, man. Take the woman in the hut. Take the hut. <laughs> Damn, you alpha um, males. Yeah, I don't know. But I mean, you get you're- like people that obsessively, uh, they, they can't handle it. And they, they spam comment that, you know, they do all these things. It's, it's unbelievable. That's gotta it wouldn't be make sense to, now. it wouldn't make sense to uh, send a death threat to the person that you feel can kick your ass. That, that's kind of backwards <laughs> thinking. <laughs> well, you know, it's well, all it's, keyboard warrior stuff. Any of them actually got in a fight with them. They'd run like a little bitch, I'm sure. But I, I, I love that. Sure. I'm going to take your head. That somebody's got to meme that. That That's great. <laughs> yeah, I should, I should do a video on that and deeper. Yeah, but yeah, it, it's funny. I've, I just started to realize it's over the years. It's like, why are people like that? And then you think about it. What is it actually saying? You know, for a man to acknowledge another man, it's like, you are strong. You're very good. And then beyond that, say you're stronger. Oof. People, they get a little sensitive. They get a little. Uh, so you touch. must die. Yes. They must die. It's a threat to my hut. Um, <laughs> well, they do. You're, they, they, they do get intimidated. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about your, your um, real briefly. And I know this, this isn't on the, um, the agenda, but I just wanted, I kind of wanted to ask this myself because I'm curious. You know, people have heard of things like uh, jujitsu, judo, uh, you know, taekwondo, that sort of thing. But I've never heard of. Um, is it is it Wing Chun? Wing Chun is one of the things I practice. Yeah, Wing Chun. Yeah. What is what is that exactly? Like, what's the, what separates that from the others? Well, it's interesting. You never heard of it because it's what Bruce Lee practiced before he created mm-hmm. his system. So you've seen it. Never you've seen it in it. every Bruce Lee movie. It's like eighty mm-hmm. percent of the movements is Wing Chun, right? So you know the classic sort of. Puts his hand up to the guy and under the dragon, does the pox out and stuff. It's all Wing Chun. And what it is, what kind of separates it out. And uh, yeah, and then Jeet Kune Do, which is the way of the intercepting fist, is what Bruce Lee created. He said himself, it's like 80% Wing Chun and then some fencing footwork, some boxing footwork and boxing head movement and a little bit of Taekwondo kicks and stuff, right? So it's very prominent. Yeah, Wing Chun is very different because, and you guys will appreciate this, so I mentioned it to you before, is uh, it's very science-based. It's a very new martial art. A lot of the kung fu stuff is incredibly old. Like we're talking thousands of not, years old. Not to be confused with Wang Chung. Let's get that clarified. Yes, yes, the song. Right? Although I like <laughs> Wang Chung too. Don't be wrong. I'm old school. Yep. Not to be confused. That's where I, Wing Chung. That's where sounded, Wang Chung. Not the same thing. <laughs> thank you. That's yeah. where I sounded briefly familiar to me because I was like, this yeah, sounds like I yeah. should know what it is, yeah. but I can't place it. Um, there we right, go. Okay. Get this uh, someone, uh, oh, someone said in chat. Fenrir the God Eater said in chat. Yip Man. Yeah. This so the movie about Bruce Lee's master that's really popular. Yip Man. Um, is a good example of Wing Chun as well. But yeah, so it's uh, it's interesting because it's science-based. It's all angles. It's all physics. It's incredibly simplistic. And uh, it's just based on like, you know, whereas a lot of martial arts would be like, okay, let's let's smash the strike away as it comes in, some of the hard arts, right? Or let's just like break them with more power. Um, what happens when you aren't strong enough? Like what happens when the bigger caveman comes along and take your hut, who's like 400 pounds and really strong, you can't push him away. Right, you're not more powerful, even if you he'll were eat your hut. He'll eat your hut. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he'll, he'll eat so your no, hut. it's it's, well, it's science, and uh, it's made so you just kind of use angles and physics to. Uh, but isn't judo a lot like that too? Because judo, you're using the opponent's momentum against them. In in effect, I mean, so you're yes. saying it's, it's kind of it's kind of similar to judo, but you're also taking into account things like leverage, applied force, and things of that nature. Yes, there are the sciences like that that are tapped into, but this takes it to another level, as in like angles. It's it's all about the center line. It just runs down the yeah, opponent's spine. And awesome. you're just always exploiting the center line. Whoever controls the center line wins the fight. If a punch is coming at me, all I need to do is move it like two inches. And then it goes past my face. And then I can punch them in the face. It's very, very, very simplistic. So if you can get them off base. center, you're pretty well going to win the fight. If you can get them off yeah, center from exactly. the punches or you knock them off balance in some way, then it goes to grappling, yeah. right? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And then you see it in boxing all the time, right? Someone changes angles. You get a better hit on someone, and then boom, it's beautiful. It's it's all are, the same thing. But when are Chun's you able just, to think? Are you able to think like that when you're fighting though? Like, okay, I need to move his his punch out two inches. Like, are you able to be that precise uh, when you? Because it seems so, like it'd be really difficult to to strike that balance between thinking and actually performing the fighting. Right. So I, I, just, I think like Daredevil. Uh, how Daredevil does it, you know, in his mind. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that- that's exactly what I see. It's crazy. I'm blind. Yeah. And then I go and fight. Yeah. No, um, you, you talk about a great topic. Of course, Bruce Lee loved this one too. And it's about, do you think when you fight, you know, do you think of what I'm going to use this techniques next? And this is sort of the low level practitioners do this and they usually lose. And you can see any number of any martial artists doing this, right? Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to do this combo. It's going to be a, you know, jab, jab, cross up. And then they're already knocked out. Cause it's like, so telegraphed and, and everything. Right. So what you want to do when you're fighting is just not think you just kind of turn off everything and it becomes this instinctual response. And you know, the more you train and stuff, it becomes second nature, right? And that's, that's the level you want to get to. So Bruce Lee loved this, of course, uh, the idea of if you are too structured, right, then you become mechanical. Like we just said, okay, I need to move exactly like this to say, say if it's boxing, I'm going to be jabbing, I'm doing whatever, and Wing Chun, the center line, or in Taekwondo, this, this sort of kicker in Judo, this particular throw. But what happens if, you know, the opponent is in a different place? Or, you know, I have to come out of alignment slightly. I'll knock him out if I do, but I have to, I have to break the rules of the system, the traditions, the teachings. What about the teachings, right? Uh, that's too mechanical. So you have to have this freedom. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to move. You have to have this natural movement. So as Bruce said, the philosopher that he was, right? It's either natural unnaturalness or unnatural naturalness, right? You need to find that balance. And uh, it's incredibly hard to do. Hmm. I would I would go with the unnatural naturalness. I like that one. Okay, good, good choice. <laughs> Uh, but no, it's, it's it's interesting stuff. And it goes the same way, like we talked about it earlier. The idea of following any sort uh, set pattern of movement, is that creative? Because you're just following the set pattern. Somebody else made it up, you know, a thousand years ago, right? But then is it yeah. also not create? Is it creative to say, I will not do that. I will deliberately think of the things not to do. That's not very creative either, right? So uh, yeah, these are the questions that are hard to answer. And sort of the movement community has been advancing a lot in recent years. Uh, another guy, Ido Portal. Uh, is great and he's been kind of unpacking a lot of this and playing with movement but he struggles with it too all the time it's like you know if i'm going to be sort of uh locked in general movement like you know i'm I'm studying one discipline and i will do that forever like you develop other problems from that you know your body becomes kind of locked into that structure you get you know injuries based on just that Um, but then if you become too uh i'm sorry that's specific right but if you become too general then you have no structure Right. So it's like you have to have at least are we going to strengthen our legs and you have to you have to do a, a weight workout with your legs. You can't just like dance around all day and have strong legs. Right. Well, never mind. Dancers are quite strong. I'll take that back. But uh, yeah, <laughs> triggered. Um, what about you your, yourself personally? How often like how many do you get into fights? I have two parts to this question. <laughs> have you or do you ever get into like like actual fights like on this on this i know you, you spoke on this earlier but before you actually learned the um the you know you practice the uh the art were you somebody that would fight uh quite often and have you, do you fight like professionally like do you do mma matches or boxing where you're actually going in there to uh, do it for real i'm not a professional no. no i'm not you won't see me on tv on ufc or anything like that but no we spar all the time we train um, and like we said earlier, I think it's incredibly important for anyone, even outside of martial arts, to really get in the ring, put on some headgear, make sure it's safe, absolutely make sure it's safe, and get punched, get punched a few times and throw punches and kind of experience that battle high, that that uh, that high level of instinct where there's just tunnel vision and everything's gone, right? So do it. Um, and I think to say you're a martial artist and have not to done that is quite, is a little questionable, right? It's like saying, mm-hmm. I'm a painter. And I have this this large collection of paintbrushes and paints and colors, and I have so many, and I can tell you all about them. So wait, have you painted anything? No, no, I don't paint. That's ridiculous. Yeah, so it's it's sort of the same thing. You have to do some level of uh, of training. But back to the philosophy, that's a little violent, right? So we don't want to become violent with our martial arts. The highest level is not fighting. So it's it's crazy, man. The thing is, though, that guy that uh, that never painted that would be considered an art form. Like That's he right. would be Not revered <laughs> as someone uh, because he's Painting resisting the temptation. Of the art. He's able to have you know, the tools, I'm, I'm, but he doesn't have to give <laughs> into the, uh, the temptation. I'm going to bring this. To, I'm going to bring this to philosophy a little bit even deeper, if I can, for a second, Please. because you know you're Please talking do. about that, and I think I think I would probably relate this into what's called virtue epistemology and virtue ethics. And so I would probably say that look at. The highest thing you can you can attend to to try to to reach right a a true a virtue would be 
having the ability to fight and fight when necessary, but trying to avoid it at all costs. This would be the same thing like honesty, right? We all try to reach being honest, but we don't want to be too honest.